Um, I mentioned you're you're related to the the great Celtic music group, the, the Rankin family, which your your father John Morris Rankin co-founded. How did that? I've I've got to think that shaped your relationship with music as a kid, did it? Mm, I think that there are some underlying Celtic uh, melodies in the record. I think that those things don't really go away. But uh, it's similar for a lot of people in Cape Breton. I think that there's, <laughs> I mean, malls don't really exist. Not a whole lot of uh, loft parties or uh, movie theaters or anything like that. So you have to make your own fun. Did you Do you m- remember when you realized you were from this great musical tradition? Uh, I think when we were little, we would go to our grandmothers and when they would go and play on the Junos. And so we'd watch the Junos. <laughs> Them on the Junos, yeah. You go, that was kind of there, cool. there they are on the Junos, yeah. So yeah. You, you, you had a sense even as a kid that you came from a famous family? I think so, though it was very modest. My father was very scruffy and down to earth, and, you know, he coached my brother's baseball team, and we had, a, you know, it wasn't super glamorous. We lived in the woods, so. <laughs> you started playing fiddle when you were a kid. Yeah. Taking fiddle lessons, in fact. Yep. Uh, did you have a sense that you wanted that music was going to be something that inevitably would become your your calling? No. I, I thought I was going to be a veterinarian, but math wasn't really great for me, so I failed at a bunch of other things, and here I am. <laughs> so you, re- you really didn't think, even given the tradition of your family, that music was where the, the path you were going to take? I don't think it was super encouraged. I think it's a really weird field to go in to. <laughs> I don't really consider it a field, but, um, you know, it's hard. It, I don't, and it was hard for them, and it's hard work. And then you, <laughs> s- you studied theater at, yeah. at university following yep. high school. What, what's, tell me about wh- what attracted you to theater. I did sa- we did a Mamma Mia play when I was in grade 11, uh, which I wore a fat suit, which was amazing. Were you Sophie? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it was. I had so much fun. And then so we did a, another play when I was in grade 12, and then I really wanted to do it. Um, but I sort of... So you were singing. I was you, singing. You've, you've been singing that was for when a I started time, right. to sing in front of people when I did like my little audition or something for the part, but I was playing the fiddle up until then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you went to school to the University for Theater. Yeah, I went to Dal for a little bit. Did you imagine a, a, a life in theater? No, I think when I got there, I was kind of intimidated by. Um, I kind of fell back in the back of the class. Like, theater people are very competitive. It's intimidating and for lovely, sure. Lovely, but school, you know, yeah. extroverts, and I was a bit intimidated by that. So I think. It wasn't really my cup of tea. <laughs> so you left school after a short while to, to join the, the Rankins during a reunion tour in 2007. Um, tell me about that. What was that experience like for you, being then part <laughs> of the Rankins all of a sudden? Um, I think I was more of like a little feature in their show. Um, I wasn't like the new member. Um, they had no intention of, you know, placing me in that. Empty slot, but um, you're like Michael Jackson. In yeah, the Jackson yeah. they bring out the, the young one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. I did like the three numbers, and then I, you know, sat and <laughs> ate catering or whatever. But yeah, it's nice to be on a tour bus and and play in arenas where uh, you're not setting up your own PA. And, and, and Molly, with that, at that point, did you sort of go, "Wow, this is this is cool. I could get used to this." I think so, but I didn't know what the other aspect of it was. Now I I kind of. Pr- prefer now I have a, a greater understanding of uh, just the rudimental <laughs> aspects of playing I you know people would hand me a guitar whereas now I you know I'm screwing the bolt on <laughs> before we go on you know right you're more different. hands-on involved in it you released this solo EP in 2010 uh, and at the time when listening to this is this is more of a folk singer-songwriter vein. Uh, tell me about the transition from that into this guitar pop sound you, that we hear with Always. Well, when we went to uh, Calgary to record with Chad, it was still the Chad, idea... Chad th- Van Galen. Yeah, Chad Van Galen, sorry. <laughs> uh, it was still very much like under my name. And then I think that the songs that Alec and I uh, and Brian were making were more band-oriented, and I, it, I didn't realize... <laughs> and then Chad was like, you guys are idiots. You guys are a band. 
And then we were like, I think we are. So, I think we're a band. <laughs> so we have Ch Chad to thank for really crystallizing the sound that we hear from yeah, Always. Yeah, he's like, you should find a name. <laughs> You're also kind of a, a, and where did Always come from then, when you had to find a name? Uh, it's really hard because certain words have connotations of, e like, every word is so, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to describe it, but it's, certain words have different, um, things that you jump to when you when you see them but always with kind of a blank slate and had some sentimental value um but yeah there's also the uh, feminine product so right thank you yes yeah. <laughs> if you didn't know all kinds of yeah. uh, relationships to the sword so uh it's also kind of an east coast super group i mean you've got uh, you, your childhood friend carrie from cape breton you've also got alec from two hours traffic you got phil and brian from the danks two noted uh, PEI bands. Uh, how did that all come together? I was going to uh, to two hours traffic shows, and so is Carrie <laughs> um, and the Danks. And it's a small scene in the East Coast. And I just met Alec, and we had plans of uh, of him helping, you know, to produce sort of what I was writing. And over the course of like maybe two years, it finally actually happened. And then we made the EP. Um, and then everyone sort of migrated around the same time we were sort of getting the long winters <laughs> on PEI and in Halifax we were getting to us I think we just wanted to change so we all sort of came to Toronto together. yeah uh I'm eager for you guys to play another song I really have to say I mean you're you're very modest about all this but um you've made a record that that really is resonating and I'm really excited for this to come out next week and for you guys to get the kind of attention that you're already getting but I'm sure you'll get a lot more uh, what kind of response have you had from your your musical relatives <laughs> oh I think they laugh I think that's really funny for them uh they're all so sweet I mean what does Jimmy I, you know, say Jimmy Rankin uh I think Jimmy posted something on Facebook maybe just like hey little Molly did this or something you know which is cute but uh right. you know loud guitars and and a little bit of noise is, is probably pretty funny to them well it's yeah. really nice to have you here <laughs> 